What is happening to Nicholas Jackson? In Chelsea's match against West Ham, Nico Jackson had an amazing performance, scoring the quickest brace for Chelsea in the Premier League since Didier Drogba against Middlesbrough in 2005. While he has made many Chelsea fans frustrated during his time at the club, Jackson had a decent goal return for the 23-24 season and has started the new season strongly. His numbers put him up on a list featuring some of the best Premier League stars like Erling Haaland, Hyung Min Son, Cole Palmer, among others. Jackson has even been seen to have surpassed some Premier League legends, even in terms of their goal ratio in their first 40 games, which we'll talk about soon. Yet, Jackson is one of the most criticised Premier League players, with fans believing he's terrible in front of goal. Is he truly bad, or are the criticisms unfair? Do Chelsea even need Victor Osimhen? Victor Osimhen, Victor Gaioqueres and Benjamin Sesko were all names that Chelsea fans threw around at the start of the 24-25 transfer window. This was understandable, considering their main striker after his first season had a 17.5% conversion rate. And how he started the season with missing chances. To Chelsea fans, this wasn't the type of striker that they needed, and they feared that with Jackson, their striking problems would continue. Jackson wasn't the kind of strong target man that Chelsea have become used to since Didier Drogba and Diego Costa. Drogba was the ultimate big game player for Chelsea, scoring 10 goals in 10 finals. He scored 164 goals and assisted 88 times in 381 appearances for Chelsea. Costa, too, was prolific for Chelsea with 59 goals and 21 assists in 120 appearances. Rogba and Costa were different in approach, but the two were strong and ruthless when it came to scoring. They used their strength to bully defenders. Unlike those two, Jackson isn't a duelist. He only won 41.8% of his duels, which, coupled with his wastefulness in front of goal, didn't make him a fan favourite. However, surely he can't be that bad. Jackson, who Chelsea bought from Villarreal, did almost everything right except scoring goals. He was always heavily involved in how Chelsea played. Jackson isn't the typical number nine. He presses heavily and never stops running until the end of the game. Even this needs some work, as Jackson was able to make just four interceptions in the 23-24 Premier League season. Despite being six foot two, Jackson isn't superb when it comes to being a target man like Drogba, who was also six two. The Chelsea legend was great in the air and could retain the ball under immense pressure. Jackson can't do this because of his poor aerial and dueling abilities. Jackson only won 35.7% of his aerial duels, but he isn't completely hopeless. He has his own style of taking defenders out of the game. With his quick feet and pace, Jackson evades defenders by dribbling and also loves to run in behind, but he doesn't usually do it that efficiently. At least something he's better at than Drogba and Costa is his creativity and passing. He is creative and he can create chances for others. In the 23-24 season for Chelsea in the Premier League, Jackson created 39 chances, which makes him superb at linking up play. With his creativity and ability to link up play, Jackson has formed a deadly partnership with Cole Palmer, as fans have begun to notice. A partnership has produced 11 goals since the start of the 23-24 season, with another one against Brighton for Palmer's first. It's great to watch at times and has the potential to become similar to Harry Kane and Hyung Min Son, or one that Chelsea fans will remember fondly, as Piliqueta down that right hand side and Alvaro Morata. However, as good as Jackson is in other aspects of the game, missing 24 big chances in front of goal will make those other aspects seem kind of worthless. He cost Chelsea dearly in their FA Cup semi-final match against Manchester City. And although Chelsea had a call for a penalty waved off by the ref, if Jackson had done his job, there wouldn't have been the need for Chelsea focusing on that penalty call after the game. Chelsea were wasteful in that game, but Jackson was by far the biggest culprit, as most of Chelsea's chances fell to him. 
As usual, he did everything right in that game except finishing the chances that he got. Jackson was arguably the best player on the pitch and the worst player on the pitch, all in the same game, which I've not seen before, former England defender Stuart Pearce said. That match left Chelsea fans thinking, what would have been if Jackson had just finished his chances? It wouldn't be the last time that they'd feel that way. Jackson had given them a taste of how he could be both bad and good in a game when Chelsea played Tottenham away in the 23-24 season. He scored a hat-trick in that game, but he could have scored more if he'd been clinical. In a sense, the performances against City and Tottenham were good, but his performance against Nottingham Forest early in that season was terrible. In that game, Jackson failed to register a single shot on target and missed two big chances. Chelsea lost that game, and it would have been a different result if Jackson could just find the target. He would disappoint Chelsea fans more in their humiliation against Arsenal. After Arsenal scored three goals, Jackson had the chance to pull one back, maybe give Chelsea a slim chance of a comeback. Then instead of hitting the back of the net, Jackson hit the side when he chose to shoot at Raya's near post from close range. It isn't unusual for forwards to miss chances, but if they'd scored later in that game, fans would look the other way. Jackson usually missed these chances without making amends. He managed to do so against Tottenham and City in the league, but it doesn't happen as often as fans would like. So why did Chelsea sign a player with seemingly poor finishing? Chelsea, under their new ownership, have claimed that they used a new data-based approach when it came to signing new players. So did the data lie? Or did Chelsea hope to improve his finishing upon signing him? Nicholas Jackson grew up in Senegal, where he was regarded as the Senegalese Neymar due to his quick feet, pace and dribbling ability. He was a showman, and he got the chance to do it at the biggest stage in 2019 when Villarreal acquired his services. But it didn't look like they rated him. They didn't even announce his transfer. So Jackson had a great task in front of him. He had to prove to the club that acquired his services that he was worthy of their attention. In 2020, he was sent on loan to Mirandes in the second tier of the Spanish league, but he had a minimal impact in that club with one goal in 16 appearances. Jackson was in danger of falling behind, and so he needed to do something. Villarreal put Jackson in their B team, which played in the third tier for the 21-22 season. It was in this team that Jackson's fortunes changed. He scored five times and produced seven assists to help his side get promoted to the Zagunda division. Finally, Jackson had begun to gain the attention of Villarreal fans and he got some more first team opportunities in that 21-22 season. He made his debut on the 3rd of October 2021, but it wouldn't be until the start of the 22-23 season that he truly became a first team regular. Jackson quickly showed that Villarreal had made the right choice in giving him a chance in the first team with a goal in their 3-0 win against Real Valladolid. His goal was a typical poacher's goal, and it showed Jackson's ability to position himself well in the opponent's box. That performance sealed his position within the first team. Now, unfortunately, Jackson's goals dried up, and he'd only score one more time before receiving a hip injury. That injury didn't discourage Bournemouth from trying to get his services in the 2023 January transfer window, but unbelievably, that move collapsed because Jackson failed his medical. It didn't matter to Jackson, and he focused on recovery. When he returned from the injury, Jackson was like a man reborn. He went on a blazing goal-scoring run, which saw him score nine goals in eight games to help Villarreal cement their place in the top five. With his goal-scoring run, which eventually saw a total of 13 goals in 38 appearances, Jackson had had the best non-penalty goals per 90 minutes rate in Europe's top five leagues for under-21s during the 22-23 campaign. He even performed better than the likes of Jamal Musiala. With the kind of performances that Jackson had for Villarreal, and with Chelsea's 
new transfer strategy of going after talented youngsters, him going to Chelsea seemed natural, especially when he wasn't meant to be a starter. Christopher and Kunku was. Now, the two struck up a lovely partnership in pre-season, but with Nkunku injured, Jackson had to lead the line for Chelsea. That was always going to be a hard task for any striker, considering Chelsea was going through a rebuild and was still very chaotic. But despite this, at the end of the season, Jackson had managed to score 14 goals and produce five assists in 35 league appearances for the club. Now, this is a decent goal return for a striker, and it made him one of the top 25 Chelsea players in the Premier League era to have high-scoring seasons. Now, Jackson is nowhere near Drogba yet, but that goal haul has made him surpass the Chelsea legend as Drogba scored 10 goals in his first season with Chelsea. And there's more. In his first 40 Premier League games as a Chelsea player, Jackson has scored 18 goals, while Drogba scored 16. So, could he really be the new Drogba in the making? Maybe. Can Jackson bear the weight of that comparison? Jackson's goals also put him among the elite players in Europe in terms of non-penalty league goals. So, since January 2023, he has scored more non-penalty goals than Mohamed Salah, Jude Bellingham, Vinicius Jr. and Raphael Leo. He scored the same as Phil Foden and Hyung min Son in the Premier League. So, yes, Jackson misses a lot of chances. So does Haaland too. I mean, in the 23-24 season, Haaland missed the most chances. Haaland missed 34 big chances and still ended up being the league's highest goal scorer. The problem is, Jackson needs to score as much as he misses. And since the start of the 24-25 season, he seems to be doing just that. Jackson seems rejuvenated.